Hello, I'm Craig Burnback, and welcome to a new episode of EPS Inspires, your periodic look at news and information from around Evergreen Public Schools. Let's begin with a special visitor to Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School, United States Senator Patty Murray. Senator Murray stepped into the halls of Henrietta Lacks High School and greeted Superintendent Mike Merlino, school board members Rob Perkins, Ginny Gronwald, and Julie Bocanegra. But it was clear from the start, Senator Murray was here to hear from students. Uh, my, we're going to be running you through some of the nursing program and the pharmacy and a couple others. Uh, and she was like genuinely interested and genuinely wanted to know what we were talking about and like what's going on in the school and it was really helpful to see someone like really interested in what we were doing because it's something that like all of us are very passionate about so it's cool to see that passion in somebody else. After introductions, the students led Senator Murray right to the nursing suite and explained how they get hands-on experience every day in the simulation lab. But they hook up to our monitor and we can see all of their vitals, they can cry. They can As she did all morning long, Senator Murray asked questions about the program, but she was particularly interested in the individual students' thoughts and plans. Yes. So what do you do when you graduate then? Um, when I graduate, I'll have like my CNA license. I plan on going somewhere in the medical field. A couple of my friends and I were actually joking about how she'd show up with you know, multiple cars that looked the same and that there'd be a bunch of security guards, but you know, she was pretty laid back. I thought that was cool. Next up was a visit to the Gila High School Pharmacy, where Senator Murray asked instructor Amy Hauger how she found her way to the classroom. I um, wanted to do something different with my career, and teaching has been an extraordinary experience. That's awesome. That's really great. Okay. Across the hallway in the biotechnology room, students showed Senator Murray some of their favorite activities and experiments. Uh, we have a plasma wand, which is my favorite tool, if I can turn it on. So basically, students also shared how proud they are to have Henrietta Lacks as their namesake for their school. They really took her cells and without her permission, it was completely unethical. And you get the opportunity to show a senator from Washington, D.C. around your school. It's not very often, so I was very proud to show my school off um, to Senator Patty Murray. The final stop will probably be the most memorable for students as the senator shared her thoughts about their school. To um, see your school, this is really amazing, and I just want you to know I'm really impressed. Obviously, the For the young women in attendance, Senator Murray's message was particularly powerful and empowering. I was told crazy things like, don't call yourself Patty, call yourself Pat, so when people vote they won't think you're a woman, which I was like, what are you kidding me? I'm running because because I'm a woman. <laughs> feeling inspired, feeling empowered, and I know that because of her reassuring words that I can do it. If she can do it, then I can do it. That was a special day that those students won't soon forget. Well, recently I had a chance to visit Riverview Elementary School for an annual event. They call it the Walk and Talk, and it's a way to encourage students to get some exercise and learn about their neighborhood. So this is a, a great event where the staff from Riverview go out to the community and we collect kids at these meeting locations and then we safely walk them to school. And it's such a great community builder because a lot of times as the kids are walking up, people come out from their houses um, and they ask what's going on and a lot of times some of the people in the community actually join the walk. How'd you enjoy today's walk and talk? We loved it. I think we did it last year. It's really exciting. Naya talks about it for a week before it happens. Um, and then, like this morning, as soon as she got up, she's like, uh, we got to do this today. I, and I thought she would forget, but of course she didn't. I was walking down to my school and we, I got some juice and I was talking to my friends and my mom and daddy. Did you enjoy walking to school with your parents today? Yeah. For me as a PE teacher, I really try to promote health and fitness and walking to school is a great way to get that, you know, recommended 60 minutes of daily physical activity. How'd you get here today? My dad walked me and I live down the street from here and it's a really long walk. Why'd you enjoy walking today? Because I like exercise. It's nice because it's a little bit more casual. It's not, you know, directed at academics or, or anything specific. Um, it's just more about connecting on a, on a casual, you know, human to human basis. You get to meet a lot of people and you get to meet a lot of the families and kids and it's nice that they do things like this. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's great for their health and it's great for us because we have an excuse to pass out donuts and turn on music and dance. 
when you looked out and saw your students today and, and their faces, uh, what were you feeling? Just joy. Just happy to be here and happy to, to be part of such a great community. We should note that the Riverview Walk and Talk was inspired by a similar event held annually at Endeavor Elementary School. Now we want to take a moment to show you how Evergreen Public Schools is inspiring students in several of our award-winning music programs. For that, let's toss it on over to Matt Griffin. Thanks, Craig. We've got two stories for you, beginning at Evergreen High School, where students recently welcomed a guest conductor, the maestro of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. At Evergreen High School, it's the kind of guest conductor clinic that can both intimidate and challenge. Very good. Careful about mpa, 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 mpa. Thanks to a grant from the Furstenberg Foundation, Maestro Salvador Brotons, conductor of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, jumped right in to critique, motivate, and empower band and orchestra students. First of all, the flute, you have the first flute, right? You were very, very uh, uh, low in pitch. Try to, uh, to, to bring out the, the solo. A little louder, and maybe also playing a little with a, uh, watching out. Uh, that's that that the, the pitch will be a little more uh, up. Okay, let's try them from the very beginning. The French horn accompaniment, the tour, the the, the counter melody. And after okay. just a few minutes of playing, the results he was looking for. Yes, yes, much better. Flute player Leanna Kral says it took her a little while to get over the jitters of playing for Maestro Brotons, who also leads the Barcelona Symphonic Band in his home country of Spain. It takes a while to not only like calm down from the intimidation, but also get used to his conducting, because every conductor conducts different, obviously. And so um, it took a while for me personally to be like, <laughs> like oh. <laughs> Just a worldwide known guy conducting our band, yeah. We'll also note that it wasn't until the end of class that the maestro revealed that the flute is his primary instrument. Evergreen High School's band and orchestra directors say this type of experience is vital to helping students become better musicians. They, to be honest, when I first talked to them about Maestro Brotons, they were very intimidated. And I said, he's just another conductor like I am, he just works at a different level and he just wants to help you to become better musicians and to make the music sound better. That's what we'll get to discuss and, and uh, kind of praise in ourselves of like, you know, we, we really got to make some great strides of, of just, you know, gaining confidence and, and gaining some self-assuredness and, and uh, knowing that we can survive kind of the, the, the challenge and the pressure. Alto sax player Jacob Luthart says he appreciated the maestro's enthusiastic conducting style. It was a really cool experience, especially because he's not from America. It was really interesting to see how his conducting style differed from like my teachers. Uh, watch me first of all for to go exactly together and play without fear. And for his part, Maestro Broton says that's what he wants students to get out of classes like this, to feel the same passion he does for music and music education. It's absolutely very, very important because it's the fundamental of your foundation. I mean, uh, the music goes to your heart. And every time you make music, you become a, more, a better person and also uh, more sensitive and more emotional. One, two. And that's very important to have music education for your brain and for your heart, both. Next, we're going to head over to Mountain View High School, where students recently had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We spoke with them about winning a contest to sing on stage with legendary rock band Foreigner. It's just after 7.30 in the morning. School doesn't start for another hour, and the Mountain Express Choir is already hard at work, practicing for their moment in the spotlight a chance to sing with legendary rock and roll band Foreigner. Foreigner has sold more than 80 million albums worldwide 
and churned out a string of hits many of us grew up singing. Cold as Ice, Urgent, Jukebox Hero, and their worldwide smash hit, I Wanna Know What Love Is. And to highlight the importance of music education, the band invites school choirs to sing the classic tune with them on stage. Choir director Jenny Bell says it was parents who inundated her with requests to enter the K103 radio station contest. I had approximately 30 people sending me the link to the contest. Everyone thought we should do it. Parents? <laughs> parents, parents friends. Yes, I went to a, a party on Saturday night and somebody said, did your choir enter that contest for singing with Foreigner? I'm like, no, we haven't done that yet. So I decided one morning, okay, let's do it. Well, I printed off one copy in the morning, and when they came in, they come in before school in the morning, and I said, you guys want to enter this contest and to be rock stars? Okay, okay, what do we do? And I showed them the song, and they gathered around the piano, and they already pretty much knew the song. We learned, we learned a simple four-part arrangement, but they learned it in approximately 15 minutes, and then we went on with the rest of our rehearsal, and the next day they brought their cameras, and we recorded it, and we won. <laughs> Students say it was harder to decide who was more excited to learn that they had won the contest, their older family members, or the students themselves. Well, my brother's really inspired by 80s music, so he was like, whoa, Nana, that's so cool. You're like gonna be on stage with Foreigner. So Foreigner, like as a, as a child, was like one of my favorite bands, you know, along with like Def Leppard and like Dawkins and stuff. So like, I always used to love growing up and listening to like Don't Stop Believing, you know, every, Every iconic song, jukebox hero, anything. So when I heard that we got to be singing with them at the Alien A, it was, it was mind blowing to all of us. I'll never forget, like, my parents found out before me that, that we'd won, they saw it on Facebook. And my mom texted me so mad that I hadn't told her. She was like, in caps, she was like, Emily Rose Davenport, why didn't you tell me you'd be singing with Foreigner? And I was like, mom, I didn't even know what contest we were entering. <laughs> my parents were so excited. My parents were like, we will pay any fee to get into this concert with you. Like, they were really excited and that was kind of how I recognized that it was a big deal. And as they prepare for Sunday's concert at Alan A Casino in Ridgefield, Jenny Bell says it's just another chance to make the kind of high school memory that her choir students will never forget. We love being together. We love any chance we can get to sing, but to be on a stage with an iconic rock band, they're just never going to forget that. It's going to be really fun for all of us. Now, Foreigner was kind enough to let us record their performance to share it with you. We'll have it for you at the end of the broadcast. Craig, back to you. Thanks, Matt. Great job. Now it's time for your Envision Evergreen update. We recently paid a visit to Sifton Elementary School where I spoke with Principal Angie Mitchell about what it's like to see her brand new school taking shape. And I'm joined by Sifton's Principal Angie Mitchell. We're at your site and you've got walls up. That's yeah, got to be exciting. It's very exciting. We've been able to watch all of this from the first day of school. Everything has gone up right in front of our eyes. And when you check out the walls, what are you, what are you imagining? Oh, it's exciting. Everything, flexibility, lots of different ways to use the space, new, innovative, completely different than what we're living in right now. All right, let's go check out one of those innovative spaces, right. the commons. All right, Angie, we're walking out here to the commons area, and this is a big space for you in the school. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. We don't have anything like this right now. Uh, this right here is our cafeteria mainly. We can have breakfast in here for all of our students. Right now they eat in their classrooms. And it's also where we'll have lunch outside of where we're currently eating in our gymnasium. So we have a completely separate space for the gymnasium. In this space we can also have our assemblies anytime we want them. Right now in our school, um, any opportunity for an assembly is, competes with PE time and eating time. And while this open space is a wonderful learning opportunity, students spend a lot of time in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So let's go check out your new classroom. Okay, great. All right, we're walking into this classroom, but this is actually two classrooms. Right, right. So this is two classrooms. This is something we're really excited about. This is one classroom, so you could have the wall closed and have traditional two classrooms or you can open it up which allows us a lot of flexibility with teaching and with um, learning with students so this is an opportunity we haven't had at our previous building in order to teamwork together and so we're really excited about that and the windows yeah 
So in between, you'll notice when you get into each classroom, there's a huge window on one side and that sunshine goes right through the glass doors into the learning street, which go straight through with visibility into the next classroom and the windows that match on the opposite side. So you can imagine all the sunlight that'll be coming through our school. Which is awesome. It Another is. thing that's awesome is the new media center. We gotta go check that out. All right. Let's go. Angie, we're here at the Media Center, and this is a good view for us because mm -hmm. this will be all windows, right? Yes, um, from the floor all the way up to the ceiling, windows all the way across the Media Center to bring in lots of natural light for our kids, um, and really a place where we have the state-of-the-art technology. Um, it's in the heart of the building. You can see all the way through to the entrance of the schools. All right, and your library in your current school built in 1958. Right. So this right. is going to be much different for the students and, and a lot of new things. Yes, yeah, it was so separated. Our current library has been so separated from each of the classrooms. So this is right here in the middle of the school. You can see that our floors are going to be heated. We are really active in the library. You'll see kids laying on the floor reading books and we want to make sure that they're comfortable um, and enjoying the books that they're checking out every week. So much done, but so much to be done. We'll keep checking yes. in with you. Thank you so much Thank for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks again to Principal Angie Mitchell. You did an awesome job. All right, well, that's it for this episode of EPS Inspires. But as promised, let's close out the show with the Mountain Express Choir from Mountain View High School performing with legendary rock band Foreigner.
us tonight. You look great, you sound great, and I hope you had a great time, all right? Thank you, guys. Thank you. And I also want to remind everybody out there about the constant lack of funding for school music programs. So it's up to you. Get on social media, talk to your politicians, talk to your school board, and keep these creative dreams alive, all right? Make some big noise for them on the way out. Thank you, guys. Come on now. Keep it up, Paul. Keep it up. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going, Paul. Here's a look at how you can keep up to date with Evergreen Public Schools on social media. Check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash evergreenps. Follow us on Twitter at evergreenps. Our Instagram account is evergreen underscore public underscore schools. And check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash evergreenschools.